السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فيا عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله Respected brothers and sisters in Iman We have praised Allah And all praise are for Allah Praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an act of worship, is an act of ibadah. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon the best of the creation of Allah, the best of all sons and daughters of Adam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins. May Allah guide us to Sirat al Mustaqim, to the straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do good righteous deeds in this world until when he will qualify us on the day of Qiyamah by his mercy to be in the company of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers, I advise you to fear Allah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَعَقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The good end the good end is for those who feared Allah. The good end is for those who are righteous in this world. The Unwan, the topic of our khutbah today is about some of the calamities, some of disasters, or what a human calls natural disasters, that is happening all over the world currently. Unfortunately, Muslims don't look at this with the eyes of Iman, no. We have also joined the rest of the world who short-sightedly are looking at this 
in the light of just human and saving lives. And so many governments have invested a lot of money in this area of natural, how to deal with natural disasters, which is okay. Right? Calamities and all this. Lakin, a Muslim should take it further. Because Al Khaliq is Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu Khaliqu kulli shayin wa huwa ala kulli shayin wakil. Surah Zuma. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything. And He is the protector of everything. Al Mudabbir is Allah. He says in Quran, Yudabbirul Amr. Allah is the one who is in charge of administration. He is administering everything. The one who runs all affairs is Allah. He is the creator. He is the one who runs all affairs. Nothing happens except by the permission of Allah. If we have that understanding, then alhamdulillah, our creed is correct. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, ayah number 99, makra Allah. Fala illa Or did they feel secured from the plans of Allah? Do we feel secured from the plans of Allah? فَلَا يَأْمَنُ مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ No one feels secured from the plans of Allah except a loser. A people who are losers, they feel secured. They relax. They don't connect with Allah. They don't worship Allah. They don't renew their Iman. They don't ascend to taqwa. They don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mistakes that they made. They don't make tawbah. They relax. They take everything for granted, waiting for so-called natural disasters. So they focus on how are we going to avoid these natural disasters. The history has proved that human being can only do that much but we cannot really, really avoid these natural disasters. We can divert them a little bit. It's happening. And also that is by the mercy of Allah. Let us build a, a bridge here. Let us, you know, divert this river so when water, but water will still come because rain is still going to fall down. Just like doctors don't save life. They treat the sick. Lakin our life is in the hand of Allah. Alladhi yuhi wa yumit huwa Allah. Who is al-hayyu al-qayyu. The one who causes life and the one who causes death is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending a message that or do we feel secured from the plan of Allah? No one feels secured from the plans of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except a loser. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, one of the dua, min da'awatil nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the supplications that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to supplicate to Allah, a beautiful dua that should be promoted and should be made by every Muslim. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min zawali ni'matik wa tahawuli afiyatik wa fujaati ni'matik wa jami'i sakhatik. O Allah, a'udhu bika min zawali ni'matik. I seek refuge in you. O Allah, protect me from the disappearance of your favors upon me. Allah has favored you with Iman. You are a Muslim. He has favored you with health and wealth. You are working. You have a family. Don't take it for granted. Allah has favored you with life. You are living until now. You are a Muslim. Imam Ali radiallahu anhu says, If you are favored by Allah, 
then take good care of that favor. Uh, because it may be replaced by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you ask Allah, Ya Allah, protect me from the disappearance of your favors and blessings upon me. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you. Oh Allah, protect me from the replacement of the security and health that you have bestowed upon me. Health. If you are unhealthy, what can you do? And if there is no security, there is curfew, there is war. If there is war and insecurity, then you are called refugee, right? You run from your house, you run from your country, you settle in another country. And then he say, Wafuja ati nekmatik, O Allah, protect me from the sudden or suddenness of your punishment, suddenness of the calamity and affliction that may afflict us. You know, people are sleeping, and when they wake up, the whole village is gone. Maybe he is the only one who is left. Wallah. People are sleeping, and then their homes become their graves. People are planning, they build these beautiful homes, and by evening there is no house to live in. Aeroplanes, big planes are, you know, landing in the country to bring them some food. Everything is gone. Your business is gone. Your work is gone. In fact, all your family is gone. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa used to ask Allah also to protect him and protect his ummah from that. Wajami sakhatik. He also used to say, Oh Allah, protect me from all your anger. Anything that attracts your anger, Ya Allah, protect me from it. Respected brothers, in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut, that every soul will test death. Each one of us will die. Prophets died. Except to Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus. Allah saved him from humiliating death. He's in the second heaven. He's going to come back to complete a portion of his task and then he will die. Even Jesus, Isa ibn Maryam, will die not on the cross. He will die a natural death. You will die. I will die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created one of the best, one of the best creation, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And then on earth, Allah tells him, In naka mayitun, that verily you, Muhammad, will die. Wa innahum mayitun, and they will also die. You, Muhammad, will die, and they will also die. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa nablukum bisharri wal khayri fitna wa ilayna turja'oon. Allah says that, and I will test you. I will allow and permit you to be afflicted. I will test you and try you with good or bad. That will be a trial and a test for you. And unto me you shall be returned. Allah says we will be tried and we will be tested. So it will be unfortunate for a Muslim to start saying, I don't even know what is happening. You should have known what is happening because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whatever you call natural disaster is not natural. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is running affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that these things are happening. Allah has allowed them to happen. And that is the difference between a mu'min or ghayrul mu'min. Because a mu'min is referring all this to Allah. Good, yashkurullah. He is Yani thanking Allah whenever he receives something good and whenever he receives something, you know, a hardship or a difficulty, and how do you call it, calamity, disaster, you know, any misfortune, he is also submitting to qadwa illahi wa qadari and he remains to be patient. He submits to the decree of Allah. He submits to the, the decision of Allah, to the will of Allah, to the divine preordainment, to the predestination, and he remained to be patient, making dua for the best. 
So brothers, it's so bad. So bad that a Muslim would raise that question of, but I don't know why. So here is the answer. When flooding takes place, a flood that sweeps the city, that destroys the city, it's not the first time. There have been many, many floods. In fact, there were greater floods than that one, the time of Nuh alayhi salam. When there are zalazil, where there is kawarith, when there is faizanat, when there is any disaster, any calamity, be it earthquake or landslide, whatever you call tornado, whatever you call hurricane, anything that you call it, it's because of one of the three reasons. One, it is a rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mercy of Allah upon the believers. Or it is a test for the believers. Allah wants to see, are you going to strengthen your iman in Allah? Are you going to be firm or are you going to lose it? Because many people are only firm when things go well with them. But when they are going through some hardships, they, they lose it. They, they lose hope. And number three, it, is also, it can also be a punishment to some people who are rejecting Allah and who are disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is either mercy of Allah or it is a test and trial or it is a punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How comes that this human being who claims knowledge have not been able to stop whatever they call natural disasters. We are not used to extra water in, in, in Denver. A few months ago, a few months ago, it rained and drained, and, 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 and many houses were destroyed in Denver in a smaller way. You have seen what is happening in Morocco of an earthquake. Thousands of people died. It never lasted for hours. No. It was not for hours. Lacking houses were destroyed. People died. <coughs> it's a national disaster now. You know one good thing that came out of that? There was a town on the mountains which, which was known with Ahlul Quran, Quran. Many children were memorizing Quran and many people graduated from that city on the mountain. Yes, Zalazi took place, you know, the earthquake. And many people died. And most of those reciters of Quran died. But you know what? Wallahi, until today they are playing their voices, how they were reciting Quran. That did not disappear even though they died. Isn't it a good sign? In what state? Are you going to die? How are you preparing yourself? Because you will die. It doesn't matter. Because death does not know. No, death does not know whether you are traveling, whether you are sitting, whether you are a doctor, whether you are an engineer, whether you are an imam on the member, death does not know that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul, يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي أُكِّلَ بِكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ تُرْجَعُونَ Say that the angel of death who has been assigned to remove your soul will come and remove your soul. Where? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. We have seen pilots. We give our lives to pilots. You don't even ask. You, go to, you book your ticket, American Airlines or British Airways or whatever. Look, Thanza. You say that is the best. You go to the airport, check you in. When did you ask, can I talk to the pilot? His qualifications, his experience, you don't ask, right? <laughs> How many people are sitting on the plane? And you sit like this and you believe that I'm going to arrive. If we trust a human being like that, why can't we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us life? 
And it happens that this, this uh, pilot is also dying, Sakra Tulmaut. So they say that if in case something happens to him, there must be another pilot. He gets sick, aeroplane goes like this. All the hurricanes and all the tornadoes that takes place in America here, two months or three months ago, the whole city was flooded. And this happens every year, two, three, four times in different, in Oklahoma, and I don't know, East Coast, it's happening. What message does it send uh, to, to, to the believers? Al Mu'minu, is it just a natural disaster? It comes and then it floods homes and then we wait and then we, we get some help from the government and then we are safe again. Another one comes, do we see it like that? You cannot reduce it to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who brought everything into existence. Awjadana min al -adha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created everything. Allahu khaliqu kulli shay. Allah is the mudabbir, yudabbiru al-am. He is the one who is running all affairs, disposing all affairs. And so nothing happens except by the permission of Allah. Either the rahma, or as a, an ibtila, a test, or as a uquba and adab from Allah's punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in Quran, in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, telling us about the previous nations. Anybody who reads Surah to Al Haqqa, Al Haqqa to Man Haqqa, Wama Adraka Man Haqqa. Allah is mentioning Qiyama and immediately is mentioning a group of people who rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who arrogantly rejected the existence of Allah and so they led their life without worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave them life and they did not use, they refused to use the life given to them by Allah to worship Allah. We talk about there was earthquake, it passed for two minutes and the whole city is gone. It lasted for 30 minutes and the whole city was gone, right? People are dying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا ثَمُودٌ فَأُهْلِكُوا فَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِرِيحٍ سَرْسَرٍ عَاتِيَةٍ سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّةٍ Allah brought, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought wind. A very strong wind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this wind to strike them for thamaniyata ayyamin, he say, sakhara halayhim sab'a layani, seven nights, wa thamaniyata ayyamin, and eight good days. If there is tornado or hurricane in Denver here, may Allah protect us. But if in case there are, it, it lasts for eight days, what is going to happen? Two, three, four minutes like this, everybody, people are running away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after that, the following day or few days after that, you would think that they are uprooted what? Trees of, of, of dead, yani dead palm tree, uprooted like this laying there. There was no human beings. The entire township is gone, except those who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is new? So fi surah ghafir Surah to Ghafir, chapter 40, ayah number 82 to 85. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Don't they, those who reject Allah, those whose relationship with Allah is weak, those who are disobeying Allah, those who are not grateful, can't they travel in the land and see 
how bad the end of those who disbelieved in Allah were. Can they travel to see the bad end of those who disbelieved? How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them at the end? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there are people who live before us. They had wealth. Wealth. Now we call it money, dollars, I don't know what pounds, this, these papers we are calling money. Those people are really wealthy. Forget about these papers. Oh, dollar is down, dollar is up. What is this? Those people had wealth. Wealth that never went down. It always went up. <laughs> ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these people, look at the description of these people who were before us. Allah says, Kanu akthara minhum. The first thing that they were numerous, Allah created them. There were so many. So don't be deceived. That is only now that the earth is like filled with some 8 billion to 9. No, 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 who knows? It might have been that there were many people before us according to this eye. You leave it there. Ah, Allah said that they were numerous in numbers. And then he say, Wa ashadda quwwatan. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them. They were very, very strong. They were great in strength. If Allah say that ashadda quwwatan, then it's ashadda quwwa. Yeah, because it's the same Allah who say, Wa khuliqa al-insanu da'ifa, right? Allah said that human being is created weak. Now Allah tells you that there was a generation that he really gave strength. What would we have? Me and you, which strength do we have? If we say, let us read, read the Surah to Baqarah here for Juma, you're going to run away from this master. So it's, just, it's too much. You cannot even stand for it. Turn away. Sheikh, make it with cool school. School Allah, what cool air you are weak in eating, you can't even eat enough. You are weak in sleeping, you are weak in walking, you are weak in taking care of yourself. Weak, 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 weak. <laughs> weak, small allergy. You call your cousin, please make dua. So we dua. <laughs> small malaria. <laughs> this nation was strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them strength. You want to know the, the example of their strength? Yani these people, if they wanted to build a house, they were not building these houses of 600,000 in Denver here, 700, 1 million, mashallah, I made it. Hmm. The small house, you work for 30 years to earn a house on Riba and... 600,000, mashallah, this is my own house, I own it. Allah says that this generation was so strong that if they wanted to build a house, they didn't need to take six by six of a block or, or nine by nine. No. وَتَنْحِتُونَ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ These people could take rocks like this from the mountain, and that is one block. Now you can imagine how high. Whatever <laughs> you call palace on earth is small, small things. So you can imagine how giant they were. If they were to walk on earth today, we would have been like ants in front of them, right? They would have seen some small people with two legs. Running like this. Allah says, Wa atharan fil ark. They also left the splendid traces on earth. Now they have started discovering many, many cities, right? Many, many cities. Archaeologists, and you know, they are traveling around, they find cities. But these cities, like, how big were these people? With all that, Allah gave them strength, gave them wealth gave them influence, gave them knowledge, technologies, not only now, also. Ah, there was a type of technology of that time. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَمَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Their strength, their wealth, strength, everything they had, did not help them with Allah. فَلَمَّا جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ when their prophets came to them with clear signs from Allah, when La ilaha illallah was brought to them, bima indahum min al -ilm, they rejected La ilaha illallah. They rejected their revelations from Allah. 
They rejected a tawheed. They continued enjoying arrogantly, arrogant, uh, enjoying kufr and shirk. Farihu bima indahu min al So then they referred everything to the knowledge that they had. We are knowledgeable. We can run our affairs. We can do this and that. Exactly what is happening on earth today. People don't talk about, they don't describe 21st century as a century of Iman and the taqwa and amalu saliha. Mm -mm. They say this is a, an era of science and technology and they stop there. Farihu bima indahu min al -ilm. They arrogantly said we have knowledge. Yeah, we know what to do. We can strategize, we can make plans. We can build the earth, look at our homes, look at our this. We don't need Allah. We don't need La ilaha illallah. So Allah say, Wa haqa bihim ma kanu bihi yastahzi'oon. What happened to them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disgraced them so bad. It doesn't matter. It's unfortunate that if you have a brother or a cousin who is connected to masjid nowadays, somebody who is increasing his iman even in a society, he is not really seen as a, an advanced person now. A Muslim telling another Muslim sister or a brother that you are too much in deen. Too much. Hey, you go home and every night you say, I want to talk to you about salah, fadailu salah, fadailu dua. Some family members will run away from you. You are too much, too much in today. They will ask, don't you have other things to discuss? Any person who is making effort to do work of Allah, Mu'adhin. It has been reported. Mu'adhin wants to marry your daughter. Hey, you cannot marry. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحًا Mu'adhin. Yani Adhan is a very big office, right? A person who dedicates himself to call Adhan, to call people, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا this ayah has two minutes. One is Mu'addin, who is calling people in many communities, especially outside America. Mu'addin is a very small person in the society. Even some imams. Alhamdulillah, in America we are good. Yeah, in America we are good, alhamdulillah. But if you go to some villages where we are coming from, most of us, even imam is a little bit. Imam Hafiz is. Imam wants to marry your daughter. They say, Who would want to marry my daughter? An Imam? Just an Imam. <laughs> they have to investigate what type of Imam. Are you? A person who sacrifices his life to serve the Ummah. A person who is serving the community. A person who is reminding you about Allah in our lifestyle today. He's just there. You have to be that and have how much money and live in, in which area of the area. Yeah, you can see when this affluent person enters where people are, everybody's standing. We are not measuring one another with the scale of Iman, with the scale of Taqwa, with the scale of Apa'a. How closer is this person to Allah? It happened some years back, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed those generations. Knowledge is, from, is, is encouraged. And Islam does not allow any room, that Islam has no room for ignorance, no. And we need doctors and professors and engineers. But if you are just an engineer without iman, then you are a dunya engineer. And you are a dunya doctor. And you are a dunya rich person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, time is coming when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove you here, then what are you left with? I want to conclude with a hadith. But before that, remember Libya also, there was a flooding, a flood. Thousands of people died. They started from 2000, it went to 10, 20,000. The number is still going up. Many, many so-called natural disasters that are happening, please, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing this to happen for one reason or another. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in hadith, narrated by Abi Huraira, 
عبد الرحمن بن سخر الداوشي that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said لا تقوم الساعة that قيامه the end of this world will not occur will not happen حتى يقبض العلم until when knowledge will be lifted you ask yourself if you are a father especially a father who came to America or you know is part of this community from America how is the knowledge amongst your children do their knowledge surpass your knowledge or is below that is your own homework if it's below it means that with another generation is going to go low low then what is going to happen to future generation we are investing in school that is good we are seeing fruits our children are earning bachelors and they are going to masters and phd and beyond that how much are we investing in islamic studies and quran for our children so how much are we introducing them to allah how much are we introducing to their deen how much are we spending to introduce them to sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that will help them in dunya in the grave and tomorrow here. So most of us are crying, right? I don't know what is happening with my children. My daughter is just talking to me like this, Sheikh make dua. I'm always making dua for you. Always. Always. But you know what? If you did not even teach them their deen, then they don't even know how to respect you. Keep that in mind. If you try it, alhamdulillah, you wash your hand. But how much do we put the same effort that we put for their schooling to be doctors and engineers? Summer, summer programs, thousands for two, three months, pay. Madrasa, Sheikh, I have a kid. How old is it? How much is your fees? 150. No, no. Why can't you make it 70? School thousands, madrasa servant, Quran servant. No, 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 no. If, if, if you cannot take him, I'm going to put him online because it's very easy. There are, there's a sheikh in Kenya or Somalia or Palestine or Sudan. I pay him only 100. He teach four kids five times a, a week. Zalim, Anta. Zalim. You are a Zalim. Oppressing that sheikh. So that is the quality of deen you want for your children, right? School. Mm -mm, not online. You want them to go to the best school. And you want them to pass to go to DU and CU. Nothing less than that. And you dro drop them every morning. And you... when they come home, you want to see that their homework is done. You follow it up with them. You say, my son is becoming engineer. When what did you say that my son, mashallah, is going to become engineer and a chef? My son last year memorized this. And this year is memorizing this. My son knows hadith and nahu and this and that. When did you say that? So Dean is a part-time. Go there and sit with that teacher. It's a daycare, you know. Babysitting, go, sit there and pay 100 every month. Sometimes you don't even pay that 100. It takes three months. Oh, Sheikh, I forgot. You will never, ever forget paying thousands at school. You see, we earn what we planted. So Rasul said knowledge will be taken away, especially by the death of scholars, and then there will be no replacement. He also said, Wa There will be extra earthquakes. We have seen that. And also Rasul said, Wa zaman. 